Hello, this is uh, an introduction to our Estes Park Western Heritage Art Show, which is coming up June 3 through 5. And I'm really pleased today to have uh, one of our lead artists, uh, one of the great Western artists of today, Dan Dudier. Yeah. Dan is not uh, just a, a, uh, an artist, he is a guy who you will find lives what he paints. And uh, we'll see some of the artwork today that he does. But Dan, tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got into this business. <laughs> how I got into it. First of all, I grew up on a ranch in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. I, was a, I was a cowboy for the first 30 years, 25. <laughs> and, and, I, and I also, at one time I worked for uh, an outfitter in Alaska. I was a uh, horse wrangler and an outfitter. And, and when I got back from Alaska, I got a set of paints for Christmas. They thought I ought to be able to paint some of what I had seen up there. I had never been to an art show I had never been in an art gallery, not one. And I, I loved it. I mean, I painted like a crazy person for a couple of years. And my aunt signed me up for an art show without ever telling me about it. They came out to the alfalfa field where I was putting up hay for, you know, for mm -hmm. winter feed. Right. And they came out there at four o'clock in the afternoon and said, you have to be in Brookings tomorrow morning for an art show at eight o'clock. I had no clue, none at all, about what I was going to do when I got there. So I went to the show, they told me how to price them, and I thought, you know, I sold a few paintings at that show, and I thought, oh, this beats digging post holes and hauling rocks and all the other stuff that goes with ranch work coming and going. And that started it right then. I knew where I was headed. And so you're, you're really serious in this from, from childhood on up. And I understand you are also the director of a uh, living history museum. What, right. what, what yeah. is that all about? Well, being an artist is like any other bad habit, and you do whatever you have to to maintain it. Yeah. And sometimes that means getting a real job. <laughs> and because of my background and, and some of the research I had done, they hired me to be the director of the Fort Uncompahgre Living History Museum in Delta, Colorado. And I ran the place for 12 years. And when I ran it, we lived it. I mean, we stayed at the place often. We trapped problem beavers. We worked with the Division of Wildlife, so we did a lot of trapping. And we lived the life. So that, and part of the reason we did that is so that when I went to do the paintings, I knew exactly what we were doing, of what went where and what works and what doesn't work. And so that had a lot to do with the paintings too. Well, I see in your paintings uh, very frequently buffalo. So you, you've got a pretty good history with buffalo herds, haven't you? <laughs> I have. In fact, I was thinking about that. I think I shot my first buffalo, one that was out and running amok, and one of the buffalo ranchers called me and asked me if I could take care of the problem, and I said, you bet. <laughs> and I learned a lot pretty fast. But the first ones were in South Dakota, and then I started, I worked for Buffalo Ranch for eight years and helped manage the herd. And part of that included hunting buffalo, horseback, and old style rifles as much as possible. Some people want to use a modern rifle, but most of them like using the old sharps or the high walls. And, and so it was an interesting job and I learned a lot there too. The wariest animals I've ever hunted. Now, with all that kind of background, can I assume that the dress that we see you wearing today is what you wear every day? You know, I do most days, but not every day. And when I'm painting, I'll, I'll wear blue jeans. The rest of it, pretty much the same. I don't wear my good my good stuff to paint in, <laughs> but it still looks the same. Good deal. <laughs> you know, so that's pretty much in moccasins. I'll tell you, I start sniveling if I have to put on a pair of real shoes. I hate shoes. Yeah. And I've been wearing moccasins for over 40 years. Well, you certainly yes. know know your topic then. I, a question that I always have is, are you one of these artists who can, can visualize uh, in your mind pretty much what you want to do and maybe with just the aid of some reference materials mm -hmm. actually do the painting or do you take a picture and create from that picture? No, I rarely, rarely do I ever 
paint right from a photograph. And, and this painting right here is a good example. This painting, it's a lot of different components. I mean, the horse was from one shot, the rider's from another shot, the rider's face is from another shot. This buffalo is drawn out, but I have other buffalo for reference. I had a buffalo that were fighting, so I get the angle of this leg, but the face is off a buffalo cow that I just happen to like. You know, so it's, when I do a photo, uh, painting, I use a lot of photographs. And I also am not so tied to my original thumbnail sketch okay. that I won't change it, because sometimes what looks good this big when you scale it up doesn't quite work and so you move stuff around to make it work fit better in the painting. Now that's telling a story to me uh, obviously uh, Native Americans uh, on a buffalo hunt mm -hmm. but who's gonna get the best the buffalo or the horse here? You know what in this particular incident this guy's probably gonna just sail over the top of this cow and just count his lucky stars that he made it Yeah, because she's gonna turn under him and but that's where the horse is going to save his bacon. Now, if this right guy was really on the ball, he'd have had the lance down because the feathers on the lance are to serve as a decoy so the buffalo will hit that or go after that like a bullfighter's cape. Oh, okay. And he'd have had that down so this cow would have made sure that he kept her under, underneath. And when you do this, it gets real scary. I bet. <laughs> so you're depicting really what could have actually happened and there's a lot of a lot of history involved in that we've done this before <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this particular yeah that's uh it gets um pretty western out there once in a while well you know our show uh this year uh 2016 show mm -hmm. is the second in our series and Last year we had um, right at $800,000 worth of art right. in, a, in a brand new venue, brand new right. building. And we had artists from 14 states. So this is not a local Estes Park show. This is really a show that could have regional, national implications. Well, it should, because if you go to the galleries in Scottsdale or Santa Fe or Jackson Hole, the ones that are considered real Western art centers, mm -hmm you're going to find a lot of these artists are showing in all those centers, you know. And so the people that I'm from here, I guess what they need to know is that these are the nation's, some of the nation's best Western artists, mm -hmm. and that they're really uh, here to, because <laughs> we like coming to us as part. Well, but they're, it's a good place to come to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, well, it's fun. And yeah. everybody here last year, we had a great time and that's why they're coming back. But we need to let people know that this is a top quality art show, that this is top of the line and what we're doing are bringing those gallery artists right to their backyard. And we really want to let people know too that, that uh, even though we have some wonderful old western type mm -hmm. things, we have landscapes. That's right. Uh, we have other uh, wildlife. Wildlife, we wildlife. have uh, mm -hmm. uh, livestock. Yep. Um, portraits. Yep. Uh, There's a wide variety of art. I mean, just. We call it Western art, but mostly because it's the Western, um, it's from the West, mm -hmm. which we are. We're not painting back East stuff. Okay. You know, this is out here, but it's everything that's out here. Some of it's pretty modern looking stuff. When we had, uh, when we put the art show together, we had a lot of discussions on really what Western art was. Yeah. And my, my indication to everybody was that if it was a, a pheasant, uh, that could be very, Likely oh, Western yes. art. Right. But if it was an Eastern Shorebird, it shouldn't be in our show. Right. So, but uh, Dan, I really do appreciate uh, you stopping by and visiting with us. Looking forward to seeing you on June the 3rd through the 5th. And, um, and so I think what we probably need to talk about is a couple more of your paintings before we go. Oh, can we, we can, do that? Yeah, we can sure do that. Okay, this, is, this actually is a color study that I did for a bigger painting. Because oh. ordinarily, I, I won't put this much work into a small painting, but I'm gonna sell this too. And it's borrowing the neighbor's horses. It's called, oh. the title on it really is called Recent Acquisitions. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was a national pastime. And so 
the composition, like this is how I work out a lot of the bugs on a bigger painting, is to do a smaller piece like this. And, Oh, so you actually may do some sketches and actually right. do a painting yep. that, that is a finished product I and mean, yep. that's ready to go. Right. And, and then, then you scale it, it up and, and but when I scale it up then I then you realize that it as well as I like this, the bigger one I had to do some changes on it. Yeah. And it, this one here was actually my favorite of the two. And the bigger painting is is uh, twenty four by thirty six, so it's quite a bit bigger. And, I had to add some more, redraw some others, and make well, it work. Well, this is really interesting. Uh, we, we have a couple of Native American uh, herders in there, and they're trying to get this uh, group of horses into a place they want them to be, obviously. Yeah, probably not the neighbor's backyard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you very much. Let's see one other. Now, Dan, I, I mentioned earlier when we first looked at your picture that, that, that you're really when you paint telling a story. Right. And it's up to us, the viewers, to kind of figure out what that story yeah. is. In this case, it's getting to be pretty obvious. Yeah. These two buffalo are gonna have a problem. Yep, it's called the Path to Enlightenment. Oh, yeah. And this is based on an actual incident from the Buffalo Ranch. And it, it everybody was enlightened before they got done. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, the, and not only these two buffalo smell bad, before they got done, all of the buffalo smelled bad. They all had, yeah, these guys started it and the rest of them had to join in. And it was a, I guess the best term is a stinking mess. But <laughs> a stinking mess. Yes, okay. but it was based on a real incident that happened. And people always say, curiosity will kill a cat. Well, let me tell you, if it'll kill a cat, it'll get buffalo way quicker. Yeah. They are some of the most curious animals I've ever seen. But, you know, here, I, I the little I know about uh, really fine paintings is that light source is a critical thing. Right. So uh, how do you put together lighting in relationship to the story you're telling on, on canvas? Well, the light, the light source that you use in a painting has a lot to do with how a person's eye comes into a painting and how it holds it. You mm -hmm. know, if you had I had this painting with the shadows coming this way, it would have run right off the the painting, mm -hmm. and then it, it it actually kills the movement in the painting. What I want to do is create almost a circle effect right here with these, just with these. So this hind leg actually helps hold your your gaze into this painting. This is all, I mean, it, it, there's a piece, you know, every all pieces have to fit together to get this. Okay. So, and you're, we're talking, I guess the term is composition here, isn't right. it? Right, composition is very important. And a painting needs to have an armature, just just like a good sculpture needs an armature to hold it. Mm -hmm. And this, the painting needs an armature. In this case, I use kind of a circle, but you still have to repeat lines. There's a lot of things that you do to, to create this composition. And I don't think, I, a lot of people just don't realize, they think we just start off and paint. And there's gotta be some, you know, some thought, some through thought that. process that goes into this before you start. Yeah. Yeah, so. so you you're really you know what the artist or what you want the the viewer of your art to see, right? And, and you try to attention. yeah, you try to bring a focal point into it so people will see exactly what you want. And so yeah, when people paint from photographs and. Part of the problem we have today is that we're used to looking at photographs all the time. Mm -hmm. Everything in the photograph is sharp. When you think about your own, when you look at something, where you focus is in is sharp. Mm -hmm. But everything out here and out here in your peripheral is not sharp. Okay. And that and so when you paint, the farther you get from your focal point, the less detail you should have. Okay. Dan. We've talked a lot of, about a lot of aspects of art, but what about this show or, or your work do you want to leave our, our viewers with? Well, I guess the main thing is, even if you're not interested in painting, I mean, if you're buying one, we may be out of your price range, who knows? But there's paintings at this show from in all price ranges. Okay. But come out and take a look, because the artists that are, are going to be here, most of the artists are here. You get a good chance to visit. If you have questions, they'll answer your questions. 
and and every artist has a different approach and so we love to see you out here and if you have kids that are interested in art it's really important to bring them out you know okay so we're we're very involved in education too so it's not just come by it's come get educated about right. western art i think a lot of artists are like that i i mean i have a lot of time for kids that that come out and are really interested all right well thank you very much for joining us today and dan thank you for being with us I cannot wait to see all the art. Oh. And by the way, I guess we can see a lot of the art on uh, windowswestart.com. Right. Yeah. And I'll see you there, sir. Yeah, I'll be there. Thank you. You bet. We'll see you.